Hello, in playlist Going Strong, in conversation with Air Marshal Vinod Patni. Uh, we were talking about uh, Kargil. And uh, my next question I would like to uh, you to kindly respond is that uh, the problems, uh, special features were there that uh, uh, the targets were tiny and there were uh, restrictions placed, uh, limitations imposed on the use of aircrafts, uh, even to the extent of uh, the uh, projectiles not crossing the line of control. Uh, how did you, sir, uh, get over the difficulty in relation to in high altitude, poor visibility and at times uh, night? Uh, how was this sort of uh, coped up with? When the decision was taken to drop weapons, only 8,000 feet or more above the level of the target, we adopted what was called medium level bombing. Now the laws of physics dictate that if there is an aircraft flying at a particular speed, at a particular height above ground, and you release the weapon, that bomb will go forward and drop at a predetermined distance in a predetermined time onto the target. Now, if, for example, we were in a position to work backwards and we had a GPS available with us and we would say that, all right, the target is X and as we were moving towards the target and we knew now from that height, that would be the distance that the bomb would fall. On GPS, that much distance earlier, we would drop and the bomb should theoretically go and hit the target. Was it a very accurate system? No, not very accurate because of the heights involved. And with these heights, there will always be little errors that come up. But I say to you with some degree of pride that every time we used to drop these weapons, we used to hear from the army as to what were the results of the drop. Yes. And believe me, 70 to 80 percent of the cases, they said bombs on target. That was the success of the strike, uh, yes. Could the army have yes. really seen it that much better? I'm not sure. But I'll tell you as to the, how it came through. In 1971, I was part of a special unit that had done low-level strikes by night against enemy airfields. And it was my experience that uh, it was possible to do so. So on one of my visits to Srinagar and when all the other pilots and other staff were present, I asked one of them, I said, will you want to do this by night? <coughs> Sorry. Mm. They looked at me wide-eyed as if I had gone loco. <laughs> and they said, by night, sir, in hills under these conditions. But I said, I'll tell you what, this today, when the moon is up and the moon is above the level of the hills and there is some moonlight, yes. try it. Switch off the lights in the, at the airfield and in any case, in the general area around, there are not too many lights. And try and see as to whether you can do navigation and you will be in a position to do this. Mm. And I said this to the pilots of the only squadron we had, which had a factory fitted GPS on board. Yes. I said, I'll come tomorrow and in case all is good, we will see what next. They said, all right, very hesitatingly. Next day when I went back to lunch with them, I said, so immediately the answer was, we can hack it. We can see enough. Yes. I said, that's good. Why I wanted to be done at low level was this, because the errors get much better. Much better means that the accuracy is yes. much better if you are at a lower level. Right. The chances of going wrong become less. Yes. And so I said, okay, 
what I will do is, <coughs> I will go back to Delhi, I will get trials done at Pokhran Range, and uh, well, we'll tell you the, the side picture, side picture meaning, mm. that is the distance before the target that you must press the trigger. Okay, given that yes. distance. The squadron commander said, why, why, sir, I will do it in the afternoon at Toshe Maidan range, yeah. and we are on this after, this evening. You know, believe me, it is something that a commander loves to hear. That here there is a person who was saying to me 24 hours earlier, he was that hesitating. I had gone loco, yes. to be able to yes. even suggest it. Who now was keen and eager and wanting to do the same sort of activity that very night. In the combat situation, yes. That gentleman was much later the Chief of Air Staff, Air Chief Marshal Danoa. Anyway, they did these little night attacks. And again here I say that the wisdom of our planning was this. We could only do it for about three or four nights because after that mm. the moonlight was not there and I was not willing mm. to let the pilots go in a darker yes. area. Anyway, on one of these nights, the next morning when we did a photo run, in one frame of the photo run, over the target there, we had sent six aircraft at one minute interval, okay. armed with two bombs each. That means a total of 12, 12 bombs. bombs. We could count on that one frame of the photo run, 10 craters. So 10 were on target. 10 were on target. target. Which meant that what we were yes. trying to do was reasonable yes. and sensible. So that is so much about night, night attacks. And I think it was a, a good decision to take. And it, of course, as far as the enemy is concerned, they were wondering, what is this? Why is it happening? And when we, when the other pilots, and actually if there's a war, everyone else hears about it, and they were wondering as to how could you do it with these prehistoric aircraft, yes. even by those standards, were we able to do a thing like this? But then that is the genius of the Indian Air Force. That, that is the offensive action, ingenuity, uh, and uh, sort just of... Just Yes. Now... So, when we were attempting this medium level bombing, there were any number of people who were around who would tell me, no, 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 we know what are you doing? It is a waste of power. This is, this is not the There were doubts way. expressed. Ah, but they, they would say yes. all this. I said, to my mind, this is the best object that we can do. Okay, war finished. And I'd mentioned to you that the Kosovo yes. uh, conflict yes. was around the same time. And a group of Air Force officers had gone to France for something or the other. And they asked the French yes. that the Serbs also had some air defense capability. So how did you combat their air defense capability? And they said that we were doing medium level bombing based on GPS. Much like yes. exactly what we were doing. Mm -hmm. Which goes to show that like thinking airmen think alike under certain given circumstances. Now there was a change of heart amongst all the disbelievers. And they said what a wonderful system was adopted. And they said look at one more advantage. If we had done it in any other way we could not have operated when there was cloud yes. cover. But in a case like this, it didn't matter whether there was cloud cover mm -hmm. or not. Even if it was undercast, undercast means yes. that there was cloud all below, yes. below you, yes. you could still operate and drop your bombs because the bombs could go through cloud yes. without a problem. And the GPS would function whether there was a cloud or not. So in other words, I think the system that we adopted was good. Two points need to be mentioned. I had mentioned yes. to you, 70 to 80 percent of them, they said bombs on target. Two other issues. We had any number of 
communication intercepts that were taken which said ye hawai jahaz ne to naak mein dam kar diya ek aata hai jo utar jata hai and that sort of a thing continues and second on the 12th of june june sardar aziz the foreign minister of pakistan visited india and in this business of how to stop the war what can we do one of the things he mentioned was stop air strikes stop the use of air force mm-hmm. yes stop air strikes air strikes now i ask you put the foreign minister of an enemy country tell us to stop air strikes if it was not working mm-hmm. obviously sir. and as it you had was, seen at uh, uh, interval of 1 minute though at frame uh, that uh, eight, eight, eight uh, mm-hmm. out of uh, So in other yes. words under very difficult circumstances we have to find a way to make yes. the most of whatever we could do by ingenuity by systems by training by whatever and as the time went on we got better and better at it till the mirages came in the mirages had with them a winton point which was under trial yes. israeli winton pod yes this winton pod when aimed at the aircraft gave us a uh, reconnaissance and they were able to see the target at 10 times magnification so yes. in other words so, you could so see many, the target yes. that much better they could also have a laser system so that they could not only yes. see the target that much better but they could also use the yes. laser to designate yes. the target and now if you drop the bombs the bombs rode the laser beam and hit the target with accuracy tiger hill was attacked successfully almost 100% probability yes this. yes it was attacked like yes. so and then well the mirages using four aircraft went and hit muntazalo here yeah, a little little something i must tell you whenever we had our reconnaissance missions and it came down and they did their assessments assessments any targets that we saw were almost invariably our own because they are targets were out in the open their targets were out hidden behind culverts behind uh, sangers sangers is what stones yeah. and uh, so it was that much difficult to see them or they were on the other side of yes. the hill which we couldn't attack but some of montrelalo was on our side of the lc and we saw it and we attacked it it was the logistic and admin depot in one attack four mirage aircraft flattened it from then onwards we heard that there is no food there is no uh, yes. ammo yes. and in other words the war had taken a turn and it was come through what else did air force do again i say with pride there were a large number of points positions which were ours which had been taken by the pakis and then we had to regain them but all those positions which our army finally managed to take and recoup were first visited by air power and this yes. is that should yes. be in other words we soften the area and make yes. it that much easier for the for army the, to get yes. going we did that there are too many mistakes that were made in our planning of air operations not planning of air operation planning of military operations in this particular case for too many well not necessary to mention because let's let's keep that's it that's how it yes that's how it let's uh, cover it is because no operation can be perfect yes. but on the other hand i think that any mistakes that are made we should own gives, up to it yes and it gives lessons for future mm-hmm. Yes and that is what i have yes. attempted thank you very much uh, we would continue our conversation with a marshal patni